yeah thank you sir thank you so uh, i very warm welcome uh, to everyone who is joined for the today's uh, session uh, dr shinoy is uh, perhaps uh, traveling so uh, he'll be partially available uh, to our to the for today's session so he has already given a go ahead to start uh, this session so uh, So today we have with us uh, Dr. Avneet Pal Singh uh, from Department of Botany, Punjabi University, Patiala. Uh, he'll be speaking on morphological identification of corticoid and poroid fungi. So after a very long time and a long gap, after Dr. Atri has uh, taken up the uh, agaricalis, so it was long pending about the corticoid and poroid fungi. So now we have got the uh, time from uh, Dr. Neet and so and this uh, talk is arranged for everyone. So, uh, yes. So CBAC, the like Center for Biodiversity Exploration and Conservation. So we are working uh, for the uh, fungal research on based, uh, basic and applied mycology. Uh, we are focusing on uh, some uh, research on endophytes, some on bioweathering, some on uh, the applied aspects also. Uh, Microasia, I just want to brief uh, tell you about Microasia is a journal uh, which is publishing very nice publications. Recently, they have published a very nice uh, research publication. Uh, so, try to visit the website and see. And those who are intent to submit their uh, work, uh, either review or perspective or research article, try to submit a very good authentic on the current topic. Uh, it's most welcome. Micro India, those who are uh, associated and those who are following it up is also working on the publication aspect. Opinion and a review article. On various topics, which is which are for the uh, uh, we have tried to put in some information uh, which is useful for the uh, young mass, uh, whether it is the taxonomy, whether it is the aquatic hyphomycetes. Uh, so those aspects we have tried to cover. It's a good read for them. So the recent uh, time we have tried to give an insight on the marine fungal research and also given a 10 point uh, things where how the marine fungal, fungal research can be taken up in indian uh, thing and those who are still in the masters they can definitely try for the research topic as marine because the government of india is also going ahead with the full uh, throttle uh, just like the space mission they have ha have a marine uh, biodiversity exploration mission also uh, lined up so just have a read and uh, you can find on the microbial or the fungal research going on in marine uh, thing so today's uh, for today's session i have a few points to make uh, like uh, you will be muted or please mute yourself while uh, during the talk we uh, will be taking as usual questions at the end of the talk uh, you can either raise your hands or uh, uh, write in the chat box first we'll prefer the uh, those who will raise the hand and then as the time permits, we'll go with the uh, questions put up in the chat box. So uh, to uh, brief you about uh, Dr. Avneet uh, Pal Singh, I just. So Dr. Avneet Pal Singh uh, has completed his master's and doctoral education from Department of Botany, Punjabi University, Patiala. Uh, wherein he has uh, uh, been awarded the university gold medal for uh, being the topper and the highest scorer. Uh, he joined the Department of Botany, Punjabi University in 2011 as assistant professor. Uh, Dr. Uh, Singh has been uh, a member of different committees in various universities and colleges. Uh, Dr. Singh is uh, working in the field of systematics and taxonomy of wood rotting cor uh, corticoid and poroid fungi. Uh, he has supervised more than eight students uh, for doctoral thesis and several students for MSc degrees. 
He has published more than 70 research papers and has described around 250 taxa of corticoid and porite fungi. And I must uh, add here that uh, Dr. Singh, along with Dr. Atri, has been very helpful, very approachable, and uh, they are also keen to take offline workshops also. Uh, I, I, I know one of them a few months uh, last year around rainy season, they have had a very good uh, offline workshop on the field collection of mushrooms in Amaravati, uh, along with uh, Dr. Hande has uh, organized that thing so it was a very good very good feedback was there and people were able to know at, on the field how to collect mushrooms and design of what all characters can be done so uh, those who are attending young students so uh, just for their information uh, he has his to his credit three new genera and 20 new species of corticoid and poroid fungi he is actively associated with mycological society of india chennai and punjab academy of sciences he is also a managing editor for the Mycological Society of India Journal, that is Kavaka. And uh, he has been awarded with Professor K.G. Mukherjee Memorial Award for Middle Age Scientist by Mycological Society of India. Thank you so much, Dr. Amit, sir, for joining us. It has been a pleasure. Uh, it will be a pleasure to listen to you. Earlier also, I, we have interacted. And uh, I think people have been waiting a lot for the kind of this kind of fungi. We have a group on fung fungi ID also where people give their photographs and try to have a basic identification of the mushrooms. So I think it would be a pleasure uh, listening to them, uh, to you, as well as for them to have the, uh, how these fungi can be identified. Thank you very much, sir, for joining today. Uh, I'm extremely grateful for the good words uh, sir has used. It's really honor to be associated uh, through this online platform. So at the outset, I wish to uh, extend my gratitude to the Center for Biodiversity Exploration and Conservation, who is actively that is actively engaged in popularizing mycology across the world. And I am especially thankful to Dr. Shinoy, Dr. Rohit, uh, the way they have been taking up uh, various groups of fungi for, for making them uh, available to different uh, lectures to, to, to the audience, different types of audience. So it's, it's really an honor to share uh, the piece of work that we have been doing at Patiala for the last uh, few years. Uh, sir, can you, can you tell me the time that we have to, to have to, uh, for this session so that I can plan accordingly? Normally, sir, we uh, go up to 12. Uh, uh, we go for the right. talk, and after that, around half an hour or more than that for the question answer. But you that, can that actually, will, there's no, no that, that, will, that will be excellent. That will be. So shall I start with my presentation? Sure, sure. Please go ahead, sir. Please go ahead. Thank you. Thank you. So I am also thankful to all the fellow friends. I, I, I could see many of the uh, the mycologists, great mycologists, my contemporary, uh, my friends, uh, whose name they are appearing on my screen. So I wish to uh, pay my regards to all the seniors who have been uh, who are who have been there with us through this online session and uh, many of our colleagues uh, as uh, uh, as as the honorable host has uh, conveyed uh, the the topic that i'll be taking up for today's uh, presentation that is the morphological identification of uh, corticoid and poroid fungi now in this very first slide you can see there are few uh, group of fructifications which are primarily associated with the wood. And because of their association with the wood, they have been termed as wood rotting fungi. Unfortunately, this group uh, could not attract much of the people. There are very few groups who are actively engaged, but this is a very promising group of fungi that can offer you both uh, the, the possibilities in the field of diversity, as well as in the field of their exploration. So this is the kind of uh, a group where which we have been working for the last few years at Punjabi University Patiala. <clears throat> Let me. So le let me introduce the group. Uh, this is the group that belongs to the higher fungi. Uh, th this group has been placed in phylum Basidiomycota. The class is Agaricomycetes. There are 12 orders under this uh, class Agaricomycetes to which different forms of wood rotting corticoid 
and poroid fungi they have been assigned now these are the fungi that produce uh, macroscopic fructifications and these macroscopic fructifications they vary a lot they may be in the form of a crust and we call them as recipient fungi sometimes from their margin there can be formation of some reflexed part we term that as effused reflect fructification and finally as we see in the case of mushrooms there can be formation of a very well defined pileus so we have a lot of variation with reference to the fructification that is produced in the cortisoid and poroid fung these fungi if we look at the the pileus pileate forms these pileate forms they are further variable they may be sessile they may be subsessile or they may have a very uniquely attached stipe so this stipitate character is also one of the promising character that has been associated with the polyporoid fungi these fungal fructifications they show lot of variation their nature how they are produced their shape their color these are the characteristics that vary a lot when we visit the field and we collect these fungi there is one unique character which we need to mention over here that is with reference to the uh, fertile layer in case of fungi the layer which produces the sexual spores that is termed as hymenium on the basis of degree of protection is there any kind of protection around the hymenium hymenium different classes they have been proposed and in this group of fungi there is no protection around the hymenium so we term this as gymnocarpic hymenium and uh, this hymenium it is the, the the group which we will be talking to uh, today either this hymenium will be in the form of a layer or crust sometimes you may find the word crust fungi associated with the cortisoid fungi in different literature that has been published secondly in case of polypores the hymenium is actually tubular it is the interior of the tube that has got that fertile layer and this tube will open in the form of specialized openings that we call as pores and on the basis of pores this group is called as poroid fungi or the polypores so this is the basic difference that we can make out between a cortisoid fungus and a poroid fungus in poroid fungus we will have the presence of those unique openings on their hymenial surface while these will not be present in the crust or cortisoid fungi the hymenial and the abhymenial surfaces they are highly variable their color varies their morphology varies their margins they do vary a lot we will see what kind of variation that we can come across now if we look at their their role in the in the ecosystem or ecological role primarily these are the wood rotting fungi and they have two unique features they can either cause white rot which is one of the very peculiar feature associated with these fungi or they are causing what we call as brown rot so there are few species which can produce those enzymes that are capable of decaying lignin while others they do not have that capacity to decay lignin they are having the function to decay the cellulose on this basis they have been classified either as white rot fungi or brown rot fungi this feature has attracted people from biotechnology from microbiology to explore these fungal enzymes in different application forms and people have contributed significantly to this enzyme activity secondly in addition to this ecological role these are the fungi which are associated with the traditional medicinal system particularly in the asian countries there are fructifications more precisely of the polypore fungi which have been used in the management of many of the ailments uh, which is one important part of traditional medicinal system we all have heard of the name ganoderma there are so many formulations products available and ganoderma is one of the prominent members of uh, polyporoid fungi so this is the kind of group 
which we have been working and this is the group where we will explore how morphological features they can help us to have some kind of uh, direction for their identification now this is a beautiful review article that was published recently in microbiology and molecular biology review which has arranged just see on your left from this sheet like fructification to this very peculiar form of fructification this is how their degree that their their arrangement varies as far as evolution is concerned this is the group which we call as corticoid fungi where hymenium is naked there is no layer present around the hymenium we call them as gymnocarpic fructifications in case of gild mushrooms there is a phase in the life cycle where their hymenium is partially protected we term them as hemi angiocarpic and finally we have these angiocarpic mode of development where a well defined bridium is produced around the uh, fertile layer that helps in giving some sort of protection and this picture on your right that depicts how the spore producing area or the hymenium that gets organized as we move from the corticoid to then poroid then finally to the agaricoid or gild fungi anybody who wants to have that basic information regarding these fungal fructification you can consult this beautiful review article that has uh, given lot of inputs even the traditional treatment of uh, arranging these fructification in terms of morphology that has been very well supported by the molecular phylogenetic data so with this uh, brief introduction let us move to the uh, role of morphological characters when we talk about morphology there are two aspects which we can work upon the macromorphological characters where we need either we do not need any kind of assistance or at the maximum we need a lens with the help of a hand lens we can observe certain characters right in the field and even when we bring those specimen to our laboratory then second part will be focused on micromorphological characters which is very very important particularly in corticoid and poroid fungi for their correct identification now let us see what are the unique kind of macromorphological features we all are aware about the agarics which we call as gild mushrooms in case of agarics the basidiocarp mostly it develops in soil then there is a last stage which shows beautiful tremendous expansion of that mycelium and a pileate fructification is produced if you compare the corticoids and polyporoids those fungi in that case the basidiocarp development is always preceded with some kind of visible vegetative stage you can see some sort of mycelial or hyphal network which is present on the surface of the wooden uh, substrate even if you just remove the bark you can observe the hyphal network on the substrate even if you cut a transverse section you can note how the hyphal network has penetrated into that substrate after that penetration then towards the end of their growing season the network will observe it will emerge on the surface and from that surface the mature basidiocarp will develop usually you have this vegetative stage then the reproductive stage but in some cases particularly in ganodermas or some polypores a knob like stage may also be produced and then from that knob like stage the final fructification that develops the asexual so, stages we... yes sir yes sir yeah, uh, sorry, to, sorry to interrupt dr Bain. i think the uh, internet connection is the problem so if you can uh, switch off your video and then continue so yeah sure, the, sure 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 i'll do that i'll i'll do i'll do that no, no. Is it okay, sir? Now? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Oh, okay. Okay. 
So this is the morphological character set which we need to look upon and that will help to get some kind of data which will be later on used for their placement and identification. Let's begin our discussion with first character. The first thing which we have to look upon or the first set of morphological character that is the nature of basidiocarp. These basidiocarps, they are highly variable in their shape they are highly variable in their mode of attachment. They also show variation in their color. And these features, they are quite stable and they are distinct for one species. So we have to look for the shape, for the mode of attachment, for the color that can further be used for the application during their identification when we use some keys. Let us see what do we mean by the variation in basidio carp. So first thing we have to look whether they form a sheet or they are forming a distinct pileus or there is some intermediate stage. If we have a pileus produced, then we have to see whether that pileus is sessile or it is a stipitate. If there is a stipitate fructification, we have to look for the position of stipe. Is it dorsal? Is it central? It is eccentric or it is dorsolateral? Then in some cases, the fructification is broadly sessile and it may taper slightly towards its base. These are the things which we need to look upon when we capture a specimen in the field. Then we have to see the range of variation in the shape of pileus. Whether it is pendant, it is spathulate, it is ungulate, all these features, all these terms they have to be looked upon carefully. Nowadays, we can capture a beautiful picture. The cameras are exceptional. Then you can compare your picture with the literature and you can come to the conclusion regarding the shape of uh, your fungal fructification. Let me explain it through the set of these pictures. See here, on your left, there are these five pictures which gives, give you a glimpse that there is a formation of sheet. A sheet-like structure is produced on the woody substrate. This we refer to as resupinate fructifications. Here, you can see that there is a, some angle at which the fructification is projected. We call it as pileate. So from resupinate to pileate, this First is this is the first feature that we need to look upon when we are observing or working on this group of fungi. See, from resupinate, we have a lot of variation. There is a lot of variation with reference to the fructifications which do form the pilei. Now, in this case, in this on this picture which is there on your left hand bottom you can see some portion is sheet like then some portion is projecting at an angle for this we use the term effused reflexed some portion particularly the marginal portion that is being reflexed and in all these cases you can see there is a well defined formation of these pilei so all these features, they are to be looked upon. There is one suggestion whenever you go for collection of any form of fungal fructification, kindly use any sort of reference while you are clicking its picture. It may be a scale. It may be any other reference point that validates and that makes the observer some sort of awareness what will be the probable size. So we have to look upon all these natures, all these kinds of variation in the nature of fructification. So you can see they are broadly attached. In some cases, there is tapering towards the base and in some cases, stipe is being produced. So this gives you an idea about the type of fungal fructification from resupinate to effused reflect to reflexed to peculiarly or particularly pileate forms. Then we have to look upon whether the fructification is produced solitary or it is produced in some sort of clusters. And then what sort of clusters that we have to look upon. Now, in these two pictures on your right, you can see single fructifications which are produced on a trunk. And on your left, you can see so many pilei which are produced in imbricate clusters. So this forms a sort of beginning 
for your morphological description of these wood rotting corticoid and polyporoid forms just see the kind of variation then we have to look upon whether the fructification is annual or it is perennial in nature on your right see these small fructifications you can see there is a single pileus which is produced at one place and there is nothing left over of the previous year on its upper surface while if you focus on the left hand of your slide of your screen you can see there is a something present on the top which is probably previous years fructification and beneath this a new fructification has originated so this gives you a glimpse that the fructification is not annual there is a reoccurrence or every year there is a formation of new hymenium and for this we use the term perennial so after looking at the kind of basidiocarp then we have to look whether the basidiocarp is annual or it is perennial in form and just little bit of attention in the field can give you this data very precisely so these these are the things which we need to look upon then if you compare the polyporoid fungi particularly with that of garrix there are some differences in terms of their consistency in terms of their taste and in terms of some sort of aroma or fragrance most of the uh, basidio carps which are perennial they are very tough and woody in nature and when those perennial fructifications are composed of more than one type of hyphae they form very tough structures which are very difficult to tear apart whereas those which are formed of only one type of hyphae they are comparatively soft so if we have to look upon consistency from soft to leathery to woody this is the kind of variation that we can look upon as far as uh, uh, corticoid and poroid fungi are concerned mostly there is no distinct taste or no distinct aroma or fragrance associated with corticoids and polyporoid fungi of course there are one or two exceptions we all must have heard of the name turkey tail fungus that is called as trematis there is one species of trematis that is trematis suavio lens which gives ants seed like fragrance then there are some edible polypores like latiporus sulfureus called as chicken of wood gryphiola frondosa and then fistulina hepatica that also have some kind of taste otherwise majority of them they do not have taste they do not have any kind of scent associated with them so consistency and uh, the scent and taste character they are usually consistent and they do not change in case of uh, these fructifications uh, am, am i audible sir yes sir, very clearly very clearly okay, okay. so this is the set of uh, characters which we need to visualize with these fructifications when we are there in the field after this there comes a sort of observational part which will require a hand lens and for that hand lens we need to first look upon the hymenial surface the surface where there is a production of sexual structures i will begin my talk or my discussion on hymenial surface first with the corticoid fungi you can see so many pictures on this slide and one thing which is common in all these pictures is that the fructification is a sheet like so we call them as corticoids and they do not have any kind of openings or pores so what we have to look upon we have to look upon first the nature of hymenial surface just see in this case you see it is a very smooth kind of surface then to some part very minute tubercles are produced then in this case you can see very fine granule like appearance is there then again smooth and dusty appearance so we have to look upon first thing what is the kind of hymenial surface is it smooth is it tuberculate it is is it grandinoid we use the term grandinoid or sometimes very fine aculei finger like projections they are produced so we have to look upon the very first character 
with the help of a hand lens, what is the kind of hymenial surface that we can have or we can look in the specimen that we have collected. So first feature is the kind of hymenial surface. Then second feature, we have to look upon the range of variation in their color. This is the group of fungi where some species, some families, they can only be identified or they you can reach to the family or genus level even sometimes on the basis of their color. So color is very, very stable character. There are a lot many metabolic uh, products which are produced, which are responsible for imparting a unique color. You can see majority of them, they will be in shade of white, yellowish white or brownish. Very few of them, they produce bright colors. But those which produce bright color, they are highly unique and they belong to some specific families. So two things to be observed. First, the color of the hymenial surface. Second, the nature of the hymenial surface. Is it smooth? Is it tuberculate? Is it some kind of grandinoid, fimbriate, or some kind of aculeate? In this case, you can see even there is a, some sort of concentric layers. So all these features we have to look upon very carefully regarding the hymenial surface. When you will observe the hymenial surface, you will also come across the consistency. Is it smooth? Is it rough? Is it leathery? Is it corneous? That further adds one more character when we are observing this hymenial surface. Observation of hymenial surface is one of the key character that has been used by many of the corticeologists and polyporoid taxonomists for their identification in the taxonomic keys. Now the question arises, how to have that standard format of color? Def definition of color requires some kind of standard. And this is the standard which we usually follow in case of corticoid and polyporoid fungi. There is a beautiful hand colors which is published by Corner Up and Venture in 1978. This color book gives you a range of color for one particular color. You have to simply move your fructification on these color sheets. And towards the end of the uh, this color book, there is an explanation for individual uh, page and then you can note down the color. Just remember one thing, you have to give range of color from one corner of the fructification to the other corner. Young portion will be different in color, mature portion or with drying, there will be some change of color. You have to observe the color when it is a fresh condition, then you have to color, observe the change if any happening on drying of the fructifications. This is another slide which gives you some more idea about the nature of basidio carp. Here you can see it looks like as if there is a dusty powder like fructification. That continues here also, then it becomes a little bit of consistent fructification. Then these are the fructifications which are showing some sort of cracks. And this is the fructification which looks like a gelatinous mass. So this character, this feature further strengthens your observation and that will help you to reach to the species level in a more precise manner. So this was regarding the hymenial surface of the corticoid fungi or the non-poroid fungi. The second group which we are talking about are the poroid fungi. In this picture, you can see these are the openings. On the hymenial surface of the polyporoid fungi, there will be presence of numerous such openings which we call as polypores. So these polypores, they have these pores. First thing which we need to observe is color, the standard as I have already mentioned. Second thing we need to observe number of pores per millimeter. So when you click a photograph, when you get a specimen in that fresh specimen, you need to place a scale on the hymenial surface. And from that scale, you have to calculate what is the number of pores per millimeter. 
you have to move from margin of your fructification to the central point of your fructification which will give you range of number of pores per millimeter margins will be younger and they will be having a different format and mature portion which will be in the center will be more stable character giving the number of pores per millimeter after that we have to note down what is the shape of the pores pores may be circular pores may be angular pores may be lamellate pores may be irrequired so this character is again an important taxonomic character shape of the pore is one of the stable taxonomic character which gives you an idea while you are moving in a key for your identification so number of pores per millimeter color of the hymenial surface shape of the pore these are the features which we need to look upon when we are working on a polyporoid fungus you can see here for example very unique angular pores they are present here you can see these are sort of lamellate pores they look like lamellae but actually they are pores here you can see the pores they are lot they, they they give you a lot of variation as far as their nature is concerned there is a splitting which is happening in case of pores so these are the things these are the features which we need to look upon when we observe the pore surface so these are the things which you see in case of hymenial surface in certain forms where we have effused reflexed fructification and pileate fructification we have another surface which does not produce spore it is called as abhymenial surface or pilear surface if the pileus is produced so there are many species which have very distinct color that remains unchanged during lifespan while in other cases which are softer the color tends to fade with age or with uh, the drying of fructification so first thing we need to know about is the color of the abhymenial surface second then we have to look very carefully the surface that is the abhymenial surface regarding any sort of pattern any sort of unique character for example first thing do we have any kind of hair or hair are absent glabrous or covered with some sort of hair if it is covered with some sort of hair we have to look upon whether hairs are closely pressed to the surface or they are somewhat distinct and if it is glabrous then we have to see whether it is dull or shiny whether it has some cuticle like layer produced on it any sort of zones produced any sort of lines produced in radial fashion or any form of ridges which are raised so these are the features which we need to work upon just see these four beautiful pictures of the abhymenial surface abhymenial surface in pileate forms is the upper surface hymenial surface is the lower surface pores are always present on the lower surface so you see here presence of very fine hair and hair are arranged in the zones in these cases you do not find any kind of hair they are present then just see this is the central portion different in color this is the peripheral portion different in color and this is the margin which is totally different in color so these characters they have lot of importance as far as polyporoid taxonomy is concerned you can see dull fructifications you can see some sort of shining fructifications these characters are to be noticed very carefully margins are also to be observed carefully in case of corticoid fungi sometimes you cannot distinguish the margins we use the term that margins are indeterminate sometimes very fine fiber like structures are produced we call them as fibrillose margins sometimes margins are almost of the same color we call them as concolorous or they are some sort of uh, little bit light in color so we have to look upon the color of margin also if it is a resupinate form you have only one surface if it is a pileate form you have to look at the margin of hymenial surface you have to look at the margin of 
abhymenial surface. For example, just see, this is the abhymenial surface. See how distinct the margin is there. So this color and this nature that is playing an important role in the identification of this polyporide fungus. See, then we have to look upon the stipe character. These four or five pictures, they gives you an idea about the genus Ganoderma. Ganoderma is one beautiful genus which presents you a lot of variation in its rectifications. Here, I have focused only on stipitate members. So you have to look for the stipe. First, the position of stipe. Secondly, its color. Then color in reference to the upper surface, same or different. Then you have to look for its dimensions, length, breadth. And then you have to look for its position. Is it dorsal? Is it dorsolateral? Is it lateral? Is it central? Interestingly, there are few cases where stipe may be branched. And then one stipe at the base can bear number of pilei at their tip. This is another character which we want to look upon. And one species of Ganoderma is distinguished from rest of the species based only on the character of stipe. So these are the macromorphological characters which we need to look upon, which we need to work upon. Then we can have the start for the description of a corticoid or a polyploid fungus. Is it good to go, sir? Am I, am I audible? Uh, anyone else can respond? You're audible. You're audible. Oh, okay. okay, okay. So let's focus now on the micromorphological characters. The first thing which we need to look upon is the type of hyphae. Now, in case of corticoid and poroid fungi, the type of hyphal system plays a very, very important role. How many different kinds of hyphae are produced? Based upon that, we have three types of hyphal systems. Monomitic, dimitic, and trimitic. If the fungal fructification consists of only one type of hyphae, we call it as monomitic. If it is having two types of hyphae, diametic, and if three type of hyphae, it is called as trimetic. Now, what are those different types of hyphae? The first formed hyphae are called as generative hyphae. And generative hyphae are usually thin walled. And from generative hyphae, two more types of hyphae are produced, which are called as skeletal hyphae and binding hyphae. Now, on your right, see, these are the generative hyphae. Thin walled, comparatively narrower. From this these very thick walled with very narrow lumen, these hyphae are produced, which we call as skeletal hyphae. Then some hyphae are produced, which branch very abruptly, very irregularly. We call them as binding hyphae. So if you have only generative hyphae, it is monomitic. If in addition to generative, you have either skeletal or binding, it is dimitic. If all three types of hyphae are occurring, it is trimitic hyphal system. When you make microscopic preparations, you can see the septa and on the septa in Basidiomycota, we have the process of dikaryotization and there is one connection called as clamp connection. Presence or absence of clamp connection is another character that you have to look upon. In addition to the type of hyphal system, we have to look carefully on the individual hyphae or hyphal cells. We have to look upon what is their pattern of branching, how do they branch, and what is the place of origin of branch. Do we have some kind of swelling of the hyphal cells, or we can have some sort of crystalline encrustation present on the hyphal cells. So these are the additional characters which we need to look upon in addition to type of hyphal system type of generative hyphae, whether clamped or non-clamped, then we have to look upon any sort of additional deposition present on these hyphae. In case of Basidiomycota, for facilitating the release of spores and for giving some sort of consistency to the fructification, some additional sterile structures are produced. 
these additional sterile structures they are called as cystidia cystidia will be present in different parts of fungal fructification so we have to make microscopic preparations and in those microscopic preparations in addition to hyphae these additional structures might occur so we have to look carefully what is the type of cystidium there is a defined classification of cystidia that has been proposed in a very beautiful publication called as Cortisaceae of north europe from which i have taken these pictures this gives you an idea what kind of cystidial structures they may occur so we have to look for their nature we have to look for their origin then we have to look for their uh, dimensions length breadth and if there is presence of any form of encrustation that we have to look upon these are some of the pictures micro photographs that we have taken rather our students have captured them during the course of their research work see how beautifully these thick walled cystidia they are projecting with a lot of encrustation on their aerial part we call them as thick walled encrusted lamprocystidia just see there are certain cystidia which have these oily contents we call them as glyocystidia and there are certain cystidia which do not have any kind of encrustation they are called as leptocystidia then there are certain cystidia which have this cap like tip and teeth whirl of teeth in the middle we call them as stephanocyst certain structures they have some minute projections on the tip called as echinocyst other they look like crystals stellate crystals called as asterocystidia still others they have a narrow tip which bear a mass of crystals called as Leginocystidia, or there is a presence of a halo like structure on the tip called as halocystidia or we have some crystals which are placed at regular distance called as ornatocystidia so these type of cystidia they have to be looked upon very carefully and sometimes cystidia give you an idea of the family where you can place your genus for example these structures are called as ct and presence of CT is a characteristic feature of family Hymenochitaceae. So you can immediately have an idea what kind of family you have to look upon if these structures are visible in your micro preparations. Asterocity, these are the characteristic feature of genus Asterostroma. So you have some kind of idea indication even based on these uh, sterile structures. This kind of structure where a cystidium is regularly septate and each septum is having a clamp this gives an idea of a genus called as hyphoderma some call it as lyomyces so that again gives you a kind of structure there are few genera where skeletal hyphae or genitive hyphae are extended beyond the hymenium they do not form true cystidia rather they are hyphal extensions and we call them as pseudocystidia so these structures they have to be looked upon carefully then we come to the spore producing structure and spore producing structure they are called as basidia sexual spores in case of uh, these fungi they are called as basidiospores so when you make your microscopic preparations which i will come to in the second part of my talk then you will see these spore producing structures so first thing we have to look upon is the type of basidium whether the basidium is present on the tip of hypha we call it as terminal or they are present even on the branches we call them as plural basidia so either terminal or they are plural then we have to look for their shape whether they are stalked whether they are clavate subclavate whether they are having any kind of constriction in the middle of their body then we have to look for number of sterigameta number of sterigameta they vary a lot in case of these fungi they may have two to eight sterigameta usually the number is four but we have the complete range from two sterigamate that is by sterigamate to octa sterigamate basidia they are produced and then you have to look whether there is lamp present on the base of basidium or not 
and then you have to note the length length of the basidium should be from basal septum to the top excluding the stereogameta stereogameta length should be mentioned separately then breadth has also to be mentioned and you have to have a range of 21 characters 21 dimensions then you can depict that range of the variation in size size of stereogameta should be mentioned separately so this gives you an idea regarding the basidia see some of those micro photo micrographs where basidia have been depicted and from these you can make out nowadays we have very good microscopic units where size can be calculated easily provided you have an a good kind of microscopic preparation available with you finally we will come to the uh, basidiospores which are the sexual spores so we have to look for the shape of basidiospores we have to look for their surface whether it is smooth or some kind of ornamentation if it is ornamented what kind of ornamentation is present is it uh, very blunt is it very fine verrucose is it spiny is it wart like it is is it reticulate so these things we have to look upon secondly we have to look upon the thickness of the wall thirdly we have to look for their size length breadth minimum 21 dimensions then we have to look for their reaction two reactions are very very important in case of corticoid and poroid fungi one we call as sinophilus reaction second we call as amyloid reaction sinophilus reaction is the reaction that is observed in 1% cotton blue and amyloid reaction is observed in case of Melzer's reagent. So you have to make one preparation in water showing the spores, second preparation in cotton blue or Melzer's reagent. Observe is there any change in the color of wall and if the wall color changes to bluish or bluish black, we call it as sinophilus spore or amyloid spore. If there is light reaction, we can call it as a sort of slightly sinophilus or we can use some intermediary terms. So shape of the basidiospore, wall thickness, surface, dimensions and reaction that is very, very important for observing the nature. Just see, these are some of those photomicrographs which gives you a glimpse of different kinds of shape, surface and the reaction of their walls. See, you can easily capture if you have made a good microscopic preparation. You can see beautiful depiction. Now, sometimes from spore character, you can have an idea of the genus. The most important example is Ganoderma. In Ganoderma, we have Ganodermoid spores, which do not match with any of other genus, and you can make out that your specimen is Ganoderma. See, this is the reaction I was mentioning. You can see wall has turned blackish in color. Here again, you can see change in wall color. So this is sinophilus or amyloid reaction of the basidiospores. And finally, you can cut a transverse a sec cross section. This is what I was talking about. When you cut a cross section of a pore, this is the spore producing zone called as hymenium. And this is called as the intervening portion, the decepiments. And you have to look upon how these structures, they are arranged. It is a typical cross section of a polyporoid fructification. This is a cross section of a corticoid fungus. This is the substrate where you can see some subiculum basal zone. Then from this, finally, the hymenium is produced and you can locate even some spores which have been released at the tip. This is the actual depiction which you can make. And from this, you have to make a sort of reconstruction in the form of line drawings. And as very eminent corticologist Langer, Dr. Ewald Langer from Germany, Kassel University, he has mentioned that line drawings, they are the key to understand the morphology of fungi. So this is what you get an idea when you have beautiful microscopic preparations. You can reconstruct in the form of camera lucida drawings and then you are ready 
to identify your specimen uh, with uh, along with the comparison with the literature i'll show you one example we collected this fungus from some localities of uh, northwestern himalaya they were in the form of these uh, slimy structures we worked out their morphology looked at spores looked at basidia looked at cystidial elements from this we reconstructed its uh, structure how this could be and it gives me pleasure in sharing with you that it was published as a new species flavoflebia sephirosphora that was published in mycotexon in the year 2013 so if you have a very good sound morphological background you can describe a fungal specimen to the best possible way and you can come to a very concrete conclusion i wish to show you another fructification which was almost smooth very distinct looks like a paint when we worked out we found a very unique set of morphological characters prepared its reconstruction compared with literature and again was published as a new species then i was mentioning that sometimes very fine finger like or spiny fructification that you can come across look at its color look at its margin look at its surface and when you work out this you will see this is the hyphae you can see the presence of those clamp connections you can see the cystidia we produced that those uh, those reconstructions those diagrams and this was also published as a new species of a genus called as redulodon we collected it in a on in association with acacia it was named as redulodon acaciae this was these were the three examples that we can see in case of cortisoid fungi let me explain how to apply these characters to a polyporoid fungus the beautiful example is genus ganoderma so first thing you have to look for the basidiocarp is it sessile subsessile or stipitate what is the kind of association is it associated with the root or trunk once you have made this observation click a photograph showing its hymenial surface in ganoderma we have two variations you have to see whether your fructification is shining we call it as lacate or it is dull we call it as non lacate then you have to work for its pilier surface crust there are three types of the crust i will come to that and you have to note down the cuticular elements then you have to look for the hymenial details hyphal details basidial details and basidiospore details along with the context characters see this is what you have to look upon what is the kind of basidiocarp see here sessile here stipitate branch or type is branched look at their surface this is shiny this is dull this is lacate this is non lacate and look at their association then you have to make a microscopic preparation from this surface and when you see what kind of structures are present in these uh, there will be some hyphal modifications which you see we have hymenoderm we have anamyxoderm we have trichoderm which specifies the lacate and non lacate surface now see there then you have to look for the the context portion this upper portion is called as context lower portion where tubes are produced is called as the hymenial surface so you have to look for the nature of context is it one layered homogeneous two layered duplex three layered so that is a very very important character which you have to look for this and see this is the cuticle which is also called as crust so all these features you have to look upon as far as these polypores are concerned see this is more elaborate this is the context you can see there is a light colored zone there is a dark colored zone and this is the cuticular crust and these are the tubes which open through those pores so you note down this then you work the hymenial surface lower surface where we have the presence of pores color number of pores shape of pores 
that you have to work upon. And then you have to make the microscopic preparations. You have to simply cut the cross sections. You will see three types of hyphae, the cuticular elements, the typical ganodermoid spores. You can even su supplement it with electro electron micrographs or grams that will further help you. And when you have set of characters, you prepare it in the form of a standard description. Compare that description with literature. For corticoid fungi, if anyone has to start work, these eight volumes, they are the starting point. Corticiaci of North Europe. This is the most voluminous work that has been done by a group of dedicated corticologists. Uh, Dr. Nils Hallenberg, Professor John Erickson, Professor Leif Riverden, and Kurt Herjostam. These four people, and even uh, Larson, Carl Henrik Larson, they have contributed these eight. And there is every detail available how to proceed with this. As far as polypores are concerned, we have immense contribution that came from Dr. Riverden's lab. And from Indian context, we have this monograph called as A. Philophiles of Himalaya. So you have to compare your characters with these and then you can identify. It gives me pleasure in sharing with you that on the basis of morphological characters, we have described more than 52 species of genus Canoderma. So I'll just show based on this, we could describe so many new records of uh, genus Ganoderma. Look at the diversity variation in their macro and morphological characters. So very easily you can work upon these fungi and you can describe the diversity. So this is the first part of my talk, how to uh, analyze those morphological characters. I will quickly go through how to look and where to look for these specimens. Since these fungi are basically the wood associated fungi, so they grow from tropical countries, tropical climate to the temperate region up to tree line. And you have to look for these logs, stumps, and other wooden substrate lying in the forest ecosystem. That is the perfect place. They love moisture. They love a very optimum temperature for their growth and formation of rectifications. Dr. Jaspreet is attending this talk and this is the picture which we clicked when Dr. Jaspreet and we were in the field for some fungal foray. So you have to have a chisel and a hammer and with that help, you have to simply remove the fructification from wood and substrate. Sometimes you can use this knife also. See some more pictures. This gives you an idea these fungi, they prefer to grow in shade away from sun. And with these simple uh, tools, you can easily, whenever you are removing a fructification, you have to remove with some part of substrate along with it. Then you need a good camera where you can uh, preserve the fresh characters. Then you have to bring your specimen to the feed lab. You have to obtain a spore print. Now, in case of these fungi, there is forceful discharge of these spores. And you have to get a preparation called a spore print. You need a very clean glass slide. Put a fructification facing hymenial surface towards the slide. Cover that. Leave that overnight. And next day, observe the slide. You will have a spore impression on your slide. This should be used for studying the spore characters. Then you have to dry either in sun. Nowadays, we have well-defined electric dryers with controlled temperature where these fructifications may be dried. And then you have to sit on a microscope. This requires some degree of patience, some degree of commitment, and more importantly, honesty in observing the characters. So you can use a simple microscope. This structure is called as camera lucida which is fitted over the lens and you can draw the camera lucida drawings. This is a microscope which has that dedicated computer and a camera where you can click the photo micrographs. Nowadays, we have camera lucida which are very uh, sophisticated. You need not to look into the eyepiece. The image is projected on your paper. So what do you need? 
is KOH, potassium hydroxide. This is the solution which is used to revive the dried fructification. You need 1% cotton blue in electrophenol, 1% Congo red, 1% flux. Congo red is used to stain the wall and fluxin is used to stain the contents. And when you make preparations in these uh, dyes, you will see all the characters. This is what Melzer reagent I was observing following to. Nowadays, chloral hydrate is not available. We have two or three uh, replacements which can be used in place of chloral hydrate. So you will come across that world of micromorphological characters in the, in, under the objective of your microscope and then you can try. The third part is, I will quickly uh, finish in five, seven minutes. What we have done uh, as a diversity studies on corticoid and poroid fungi from Northwestern India. Lot of collections, they have been made. We have explored the state of Himachal Pradesh, Punjab, Uttarakhand, and Jammu, division of Jammu and Kashmir. Uh, we have traveled from subtropics to temperate conditions. We have collected them in association with broad-leaved uh, tree species, the conifers. We have collected them uh, from various places, from very humid, dry, to very extremely cool conditions. They have the ability to grow under all these set of environmental conditions. The beauty is when you are in venturing into the field, you come close to nature. And sometimes you find some interesting incidents uh, that, of course, due to lack of time, I won't be able to mention. So you see these beautiful scenic views where you can collect. It gives me pleasure in sharing with you that in our lab, 80% of the work has been done by the girl students and they were all enthusiastic to venture into field for the collection of these fructifications. These are some pictures of very dry localities in state of Punjab from where we got very good collections and some of them they were very interesting. So I will show you some of the features, see these uh, uh, things that we could observe, we could uh, work out and we could report them as for new for Indian micro, uh, these uh, microflora records. See, there are some families which have very unique color, very unique pattern of the formation of these fructifications. Look at their spore character. How do they vary from each other? Look at their hyphal constructions that can help you to identify and report this uh, diversity. Ceratobacidium, this is a genus which is very peculiar in having a very short celled, a very small basidia. And on the other hand, another species, look at the variation. These are the two species of same genus, but their spore character varies a lot from each other. Minute observations, careful observations can help you to describe large number of uh, these. This is a collection which we collected around in 2017 from one pocket of Shimla. We worked out it. It proved to be a new species. We published it and the student was given the honor that her drawings were published on the back of cover of journal Mycotexon. That is the most satisfying kind of feeling which a researcher gets when your work is recognized and it was 100% based on morphological data. The things continued and on this basis, we were able to publish a large number of species showing a lot of diversity with reference to their morphological features. These are some of the species of polyporoid fungi which we described as new. I will take a few minutes. Let me show you one slide. Yeah. This was one collection that we got uh, from Chandigarh, uh, which was having very unique fructification. We could explore even its uh, uh, type of uh, uh, association inside the host tissue, how the hyphae they are traveling in the cells of the wood. And this was also published in Mycotexon. Yes, we collected these, these very small specimens in some parts of Jammu division. Morphology was very, very unique. We thought it is a new species of genus Gloeophyllum. Then we put ourselves to a test. 
we conducted multi gene based phylogenetic molecular phylogenetic studies and that proved that morphology is very well supported with the molecular phylogenetic studies and based on that in 2022 we published a new species in that genus nova hedgukia so the journey continues based on this we have described large number of species and have come across a lot of variety uh, variation in these morphological features. Tremetes is one of those genus which has a lot of medicinal potential. And we have a very good uh, collection of uh, genus Tremetes with number of species. So uh, with this, I come to the end of my talk. I wish to thank my mentor. He is uh, Professor Gurpal Singh Dhingra, who retired from Department of Botany, Punjabi University, Patiala. Uh, he was the person who introduced uh, me, not only me, many of us to the field of corticoid fungi. He has uh, recently celebrated his 70th birthday and even now he's ready to go into field and collect these fungi. And I am equally grateful to Professor N.S. Atri who has given and encouraged and rather inspired to work on these fungi. And these are the people, he's Professor Nils Hallenberg, from University of Gothenburg, Professor Lee Friverden, Professor Eval Langer, who have been a great support, be it literature, be it their critical comments. And we have got some funding from DST and UGC to carry out this research work. So this is the team that has been working. All of them, they have been awarded with their PhD degree. And this is their contribution, which I could share with you. So I am extremely thankful uh, to uh, to the Center for Biodiversity Exploration and Conservation, Dr. Shenoy, Dr. Rohit, and the entire team of Myco India and Myco Asia for giving me this chance to interact with the very elite audience. Thank you very much. Thank you, uh, Dr. Avneet, uh, for a very nice and informative talk. I think. Uh, from the taxonomy to the ecology and the way it, the samples uh, needs to be collected. So, uh, as well as I think uh, the uh, diversity of cortico and poroid fungi it seems to be more than the agaricalis uh, uh, mushrooms because yes, yes. the kind of cystidia, the kind of various kind of structures is forming, it is quite di diverse, more diverse than the agaricalis that I see. Yes. And in fact, the importance of uh, the uh, the hand drawings that you mentioned, it would it's a drastic yeah. when you recreate and when you reconstruct the uh, complete uh, hymenal structure, it is very important for the kind of thing. So hand drawing definitely still is a very important thing that we feel is uh, thing uh, out of this thing. And uh, definitely um, the uh, addition of the new uh, like uh, micrographs and photographs, they have added a thing. But definitely, as well as molecular phylogeny has also added, but still the uh, the crux remains the hand drawing and the morphological structures definitely is the important thing. And uh, and I feel the, the cortica mushrooms are very uh, difficult to work on it because they are just like a plain thin layer that is coming out and you have to have that thing. And it's a work of patience also, kind of uh, thing. So I- Patience, uh, open, patience yeah. is the key. <laughs> <laughs> to work with these cortisides, sir. Yes, yes, yes. I think so. So I, I'll open the session for the uh, question and answer. Uh, please raise your hands so that uh, you all can uh, ask uh, your questions. Uh, yes, uh, Sashirika, madam, please go ahead with your question. Yeah. Uh, congratulations for the wonderful talk, which is most awaited by me, Dr. Amrit. Thank you so much. For this. You. I was after him for this detail, you know, I've really understood and very well explained. Um, yeah, uh, during our collection in the, near the uh, creek area, there yeah. were some uh, trees which were only uh, having the, um, the crust below on the lower side and it was like a big patch yeah. you know and it's very difficult to remove them also so it, it we, we could not uh, take it otherwise it was going into pieces then in such cases what we collect the pieces and uh, we uh, do the sectioning on photographs we have taken 
but yeah. then uh, yeah so there will be some influence of the uh, forest and the creek region also now on these uh, corticoids and uh, polypores yes ma'am it it creates lot of uh, lot of uh, kind of uh, impact on the kind of rectification uh, what what you are uh, you have just mentioned as far as uh, i can recollect if it is going uh, growing uh, towards that base uh, mm -hmm. this character is very unique of genus vararia uh, what was the can can you mention the color what kind of it color was uh, somewhat purplish purplish yeah. kind of a thing yeah. pinkish or purplish yeah, uh, yeah, it, yeah. it indicates vararia and Very that is one feature of vararia how it grows in that region and yeah. it will always be confined to that basal region. Yeah, Otherwise, it is very much as if it was yeah. painted. It was yeah, appearing yeah. as if it was painted. You know? And there are there are few other uh, uh, species. We we can look at uh, the skytinostomas. Then hmm. uh, they, they they really have a very unique. Rather, sometimes these features they help you to have some idea right in the field what to look for. Uh, okay. Yeah. But. Uh, yes you if you have any any pictures uh, you can share and uh, whatever we can contribute we can sure sure that. definitely yeah i i will be definitely pestering you with all these <laughs> yeah sure ma'am sure. yeah, there was one more thing that the chemicals you mentioned the floxin and you mentioned yeah. the melzer reagent melzer yeah. reagent is not available only chloral yeah, hydrate yeah. was a big question and yeah. even floxin is very uh, difficult to obtain then in that case what would be the alternative Floxin is available. Uh, in case of chloral hydrate, there are uh, two uh, more chemicals uh, which are available. I'll text you both those chemicals okay. along okay. with their uh, along with their catalog numbers, okay. and you can use them as uh, alternative. There was one paper; it was published in 2020. It uh -huh. came from the work of uh, Professor uh, Larson from US. He okay. has mentioned uh, uh, those two chemicals. Uh, I. I Currently, I do not have the complete names. It's noted in my. Uh, fortunately, we could procure chloral hydrate about three, four years back, and we have yeah. some stock available with us still. But I'll yeah. share you with with you the. Yeah, it's a scheduled. It's a scheduled chemical, right? Yeah. I mean, now it is not available. Happens, I'll share. Yeah. I'll share with you with the details of those alternatives. No problem. I'll share. Yeah. Sure. Sure. Definitely. Yeah. I was trying it uh, with uh, Lugol uh, Lugol solution. Uh, <laughs> That is another option, but I'll, I'll I'll tell you the chemicals both. Yeah. Okay. Sure. Thank you so much. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you so much. Uh, next, uh, Shristi, Shristi Verma, please go ahead with your question. Shristi, am I audible? Okay, uh, Afifa Kainat. Hello, sir. I'm audible. Yeah. Yes, yes. You are audible. Please go ahead with the question. Okay, sir. So you have uh, mentioned a soil color, uh, a chart, basically a book where we can consult yeah. about the uh, color difference. Yeah. So I have to ask for agaricales or even other gilled mushrooms. We use some kind of soil color chart. So yeah. how could we um, uh, use the same uh, book for mentioning the uh, gilled mushrooms as well? You can use the same, but you have to have only one standard and kindly refer mention it wherever you are mentioning. You have to give that precise reference that this color standard is as per such and such standard. There are uh, four or five different kinds of color charts and color books available. But this one, which I have just shared with you, this is the most elaborate. You have color charts, you have color codes, you have brief color descriptions. But uh, this corner up and ventures Matthew's handbook of colors is one of the most exhaustive, which gives you an option to have more range of colors. If anybody is in need of, we have a soft copy of this uh, color book available with us and we can share uh, personally uh, that uh, that color book soft copy also anyone in need. i definitely i definitely would need it <laughs> I'll, I'll share with you ma'am no issues i'll Thank share you. otherwise uh, 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 if i am not wrong uh, uh, afifa if you sh use any other standard color it is equally good to go with that but it has to be as per some standard 
uh, right sir because for most of the time we use a soil color chart that uh, most of the colors are not matching with the, our specimen and that's that why is, i was that, that is specific. that is the issue because range is limited in that yes sir uh, so this is Thank more you. more elaborate and it gives you lot of variation even within one color uh, right sir sir yeah. could you please share that i will I'm I'll, I'll share with the organizers and then they can uh, pass it to the people who are in need of that color. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you so much. Sir. Yeah. Thank, welcome. Yeah, thank you. Uh, next is uh, Mr. Shristi again. Shristi, can you unmute yourself? I have unmuted you. Okay. Yes, sir. Uh, I'll just. Uh, Shital Chaudhary, can you? Oh, yeah, you can. Oh, no, my settings. Maybe to go and see. Yeah, 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 see. And uh, sir, uh, I maybe I was missed something, but uh, in the case of Ganoderma, as we can see that the tube is structured at beneath uh, of the uh, fruiting body, but uh, when why we collect the spores from the upper right or crust right from the Ganoderma fruiting body? We are collecting yeah. spores so, from the what upper side of the surface. Yeah, yeah, you're right. Sometimes what happens, there is a forceful discharge of the spores. Spores are always discharged from the lower surface, but due to two reasons. Sometimes you have air currents in that particular area or secondly, there may be some other fructifications which are growing at a distance, which may be slightly raised to that fructification and that spore dust can fall on the pilear surface. You are very right. This is a very common observation with Gan Ganoderma. You can make some preparation from the upper surface and you will get pure spores. The reason is because of the discharge. Spores are always produced, but they are produced in a forcible fashion. And because of that forcible discharge, somehow they may be deposited on the pilear surface. Okay, okay, yeah. sir. Thank you, sir. And there is there, just do Thank one you, thing sir. when you have collected Ganoderma from the lower surface, which is white in color. Uh, take a simple blade, just slide it on the surface. You will get very small, very minute sections of the cross sections of the fructification. Mount it on your slide. See, you will find number of spores, and sometimes you can find even an attachment with the basidium that will confirm the. Okay, 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 okay. Thank you. Sir. Thank you, thank you, Sishti. Uh, I th I think I think, sir, uh, this uh, the Ganoderma slide that you have mentioned it was very informative for us also. Even like uh, single, then branching also, yeah. sessile yeah. and non sessile, lacate, non lacate. I think uh, people normally Ganoderma means there are one or two species they can see, but the the lacate, non lacate one. Many people, it was be very interesting to observe that. Yeah, it was very interesting. I, I, I wish to, I wish to request on this, this. This is a very good platform, and we have so many people. Uh, mm -hmm. We have a very good uh, collection of Ganoderma. If anyone can help us uh, regarding the moly, there are there have been some issues with DNA extraction from the herbarium specimens. If anyone can help us, we are ready to collaborate and. Uh, uh, if, if you can help us with the molecular phylogeny, we can publish it jointly. That will be a kind of contribution from uh, Indian context. Most of the contribution is from China or Europe. So this is really a wealth which needs some kind of more effort regarding their validation. Yeah. Sure, so we are sure, surely, sir, there, there must be se several, uh, yeah. like what we say, cryptic species being yeah, yeah. The, uh, there. So that will help to resolve it. So it's. Yeah. Uh, a very nice offer for the students as well as young faculty. So please, uh, you can contact sir, and it can be taken up ahead. So Sheetal, coming to you, uh, please go ahead with your question, Sheetal. 
yeah thank you sir uh, so uh, i must say that this was a very nice presentation with such a great illustrations you have shown uh, but uh, i got one question yeah. uh, to make such beautiful illust illustration you must you need to have good microscope equations so uh, can you share some of the tips uh, to how to make such good uh, microscopic preparation so that we can have a better look uh, into the microscopic structure uh, sheetal is a very good question rather this should be uh, the approach which we need to follow while starting there are two approaches uh, in case of corticoid fungi we, we need to make two type of preparations one is crush mount other is the vertical section of the fructification. So one tip, kindly use the fresh specimen. If you have time and if you are there in the field with your field laboratory, immediately try to take a very as less as possible, just a pinch on the tip of your needle, take that fructification portion and just put it in 3% KOH, tease it till you are teased. So this is just a kind of that the preparation should not be seen with any kind of uh, 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 any kind of patch, any kind of piece. It should be there like a fluid on your micro slide. And then you can put use mixture of two things. First, put some Congo red, a drop, then put up cover slip from the periphery, add floxin. This makes a very good combination where contents are stained, so is the wall stained. And then you have a clear look of the microscopic structures. For vertical okay. section, for reconstruction of the, uh, the sectional view, just take the thinnest part of rectification. And with a simple razor blade, try to cut without any help. Don't put it in any pit, any of other side. Just move your blade slightly over the surface it should be new fresh blade and that will help you to give very fine section once you have a section just put a cover slip give it a tap with your needle back it will help it spreading the material and then you can move from base to the top of your fructification and this will give you an idea uh, this is initially even when i joined the toughest thing was to make a microscopic preparation but gradually when you keep sitting sometimes you keep devising your tricks your your own mm. improvisation that helps you to make that kind of science. Mm. right so so yeah. but this is with the fresh specimen uh, uh, yeah. recently we have collected some special specimen but these are dried ones okay uh, then in those in that case what do, do, do one thing if you have a dried specimen take a petri plate place a piece of blotting sheet on the bottom of petri plate just wet it with some uh, water and add little uh, few drops of 3% koh keep your uh, piece of rectification on that on the lid of petri plate please place another uh, blotting sheet moistened leave it for 2 days and second day again put some kind of water and that will help you to revive your material in a perfect Okay, so yeah, that's yeah. Uh, very that. Thank you, thank you. This is so yeah. generous of you. No, no, no problem. Sharing these tips. Thank you, thank you so much. This is how we have learned over the years how to work with these uh, specimens. Yeah, the, the thank you, sir. I think I think uh, sir, a pit is required for a section or direct sections. No, sir. You you you, right. you need not. No pit is required directly. That yeah, gives yeah. you a very good section. Yeah, yeah. Sometimes we'll try to work out so for some kind of workshop or whenever you are organizing, please share the details so that Definitely. because this cortico and forward fringe has been a lot of questions were there in our uh, groups on Microasia, wherein people want to even from the Indonesia, Dr. Vita had asked us to identify some of the these sporoid fungi. But, Actually, uh, uh, we are planning. Uh, it's it's in the pipeline. Uh, okay. We are we are working on the uh, possibility of organizing one workshop in the next session. So okay. whenever it is finalized, I'll share with you the details and schedule immediately. Sure, sir. Sure, sir. Sure, sir. Thank or you. I think in the university mode now, uh, this kind of some uh, kind of new courses kind of things yeah. come up. Mm -hmm. Some kind mm -hmm. of that can be constructed. It can be on 
shared uh, kind of thing so it would be definitely we, we will also work on that it's a very good suggestion MOOCs is okay. a very good suggestion okay. thank you so uh, coming ahead i think gaurav you wanted to ask uh, gaurav and pn singh they have raised the questions uh, they have raised the hands so if anybody has questions uh, there is uh, sir there is one uh, point mentioned in the chat box by uh, sabitra pradhan Yes. Uh, there is a huge demand for felinus and for yes you are very right this the, the, these hymeno this is the uh, they are the members of family hymenokitaceae and we have a lot of work that has been done from china and other parts around china on these two genera felinus and formitiporia and uh, sabrita we have lot of diversity of felinus in india also there is a huge number of species which have been reported now there has been a lot of uh, publicity regarding the products and uses of felinus so this is uh, we conducted one study on uh, on on anti cancer properties where we worked on one species of uh, pomitiporia and uh, we got exceptional results in case of skin cancer cell lines oh. so unfortunately in india we could not take it to that level the weight has been taken or taken up by china and some other southeast asian countries yeah, yeah. this is a lot of bhutan is the richest repository of uh, wood rotting fungi there was one project from punjab university chandigarh that was completed in 80s where about 21 new species they were described on only from bhutan it's a so rich uh, country as far as the fungal wealth is concerned yeah, yeah. yes I, please i i think sir uh, the it it will need a lot of networked uh, yeah. project kind of thing because as we saw today the taxonomy itself is a complete data full a uh, yes. uh, lot of work included in it So I think some other persons or the applied expert can taken up so that they can uh, have a complete networking kind of thing. Exactly, sir. Exactly. Yes. yes, I think there are some very nice comments on the chat boxes. So I think it has been a very excellent uh, session. So if there are no questions, I at last again I give a call to everyone. If you have any questions, please uh, raise your hand or ask on the chat box. and if not then please uh, you can uh, we'll share the email id of dr avneet over the group yeah i think pn singh sir has the question from yeah, other yeah. questions sure, sure. yes. good afternoon Hello. sir good afternoon dr saab ha oh, namaste sir namaste uh, really it was a very nice presentation so very uh, nice presentation and uh, i learned a lot from this your slide something yes. but yes. i am a micro Uh, that working on this micro fungi so that's a one this is not a question just for my learning purpose uh, one uh, that entire project one fellow has submitted one project uh, along with me but unluckily it was i was not a scientist e so that project was not sanctioned so what i am telling that uh, before that coming to that uh, candidate i cultured that uh, one inner notus like you know wow. because he put that uh, in project that in culture so in culture i was getting that spores uh, no in the fruit body same spores and in culture also uh, same inspectors were coming But whether it is a spore of that same that uh, you know not a round spore that very you know uh, golden color uh, uh, and exactly it was looks like you know that what spores i got from that fruit body and huge is for lesson uh, whether it's a really uh, anamorphic spore of that uh, inonotus or some other uh, elements of that uh, sir this is a one of the most important genus uh, to work with we call it as chaga mushroom and yeah, chaga yeah. has lot of applications as far as inonotus is concerned two phases are produced in its life cycle yeah, yeah. one is called as tychogastric stage other is called as the sexual stage Yeah, yeah. Tychogastric stage is full of chlamydospores. Okay. So in in all these fructifications, first there is production of tychogastric stage. Then later on it is taken over by the sexual stage. 
which you have collected probably if uh, if if uh, you can share the pictures yeah, there yeah. will be lot of sporulation and they are most probably the chlamydospores chlamydospores yes, yes okay but probably. similarly both no and that yes, the yes. Body and they very yes. measurement yes. and everything yes it is the beauty of inonotus you get okay. both the stages both in nature as okay. well as in cultures okay sir and there was a seat so it must be yeah. According yes. to your teaching, this hymenokit, no? Exactly. Inonotus is the typical member of hymenokitesi with okay, CTC. Okay, okay, yeah. okay. So luckily I got in culture. It's I am a not expert of that. Exceptional, you... sir. It's very difficult to culture inonotus. Yeah, it's yeah, a, yeah, it's yeah. a significant. And we know the kind of hard work you put in. I have been <laughs> yeah. there in, in their lab for about yeah, two yeah. weeks for one workshop and we yeah. I am witness to the kind of intensity and labor put in by Dr. P. N. Singh, Dr. Sanjay Singh and it's, it's really a place to cherish and enjoy taxonomy of fungi. Yeah, yeah, sir. It's all right. And one more, uh, sir, not a question just for my learning purpose. Many basidio my uh, that is forced now uh, once I try to but the getting that fresh material after fresh material so many basidio spores i am not getting that uh, any uh, that germination in that so what is the reason uh, for me it is a very surprising i mean for many you know cultures if i am trying to culture so a lot of use that germination everywhere actually uh, recently we had a uh, session common with professor david hibbert yeah, he yeah. is one of uh, the authorities on polypores so I put up the, the same kind of question which uh, Dr. P. N. Singh is uh, mentioning. The problem with polypores is their substrate preference. One thing which he, he guided us is that uh, probably let us try okay, the, the substrate from which we have collected that fungus, use yeah. some kind of extract from that substrate. Probably there is some kind of uh, uh, stimulation which comes from the substrate composition. Yeah, yeah. We, we, we tried it PDA, we tried it in MEA, we tried it in so many media. Yeah, there was a yeah. lot of problem with polypore culturing. Yeah, but yeah. this is a suggestion which uh, we will also practice and I suggest you also to, to try this also. If it works, that will be a, a kind of line which can be followed for culturing polypores. Yes, I say all right, very good suggestions and also yeah. I am tired because in substrate, a number of his correlation is there and once yeah. we are bringing in that laboratory, yeah. so there is a very less, I can tell that only 1% or sometimes zero. That this, is, this is the issue with polypore, sir, you are yeah, right. Yeah, yeah, sir, right, right suggestion, sir. Thank you. I, thank you very much, Paul, sir. Thank you, sir, you honored, know. honored, so kind of you. Yeah, thank you, sir. Sir, I'll take this liberty to add one question, my sir. question from my side, sir. The, how uh, can we culture the corticoid uh, fungi? I Means any special uh, precautions or preferences? There, there are two approaches, sir. One is single spore isolation. Okay. Other is tissue culture. We okay. can go with any of these. I, corticoids are culturable. They are managed. They can but, be. Managed. But is there any surface relation kind of thing required? Ah, or that, that that we need to go for. That we okay. need to go for. Okay. And probably we should have the inner portion which is in contact with the substrate low okay. from the lower part. That is the most suitable tissue for uh, tissue culture of these cotton spots. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Sir. Yes. Uh, next is uh, Shambhu Kumar. Yes. Uh, please go ahead, Mr. Shambhu. Shambhu Kumar, can you? Uh, are you? Okay. Uh, Sashi Rekha, madam, please go ahead with your question. Please. Yeah. Actually, it is regarding the culturing of uh, these yeah. polypores. That's where we face a lot of difficulty because my student is working on the uh, 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 degeneration of the port, and so we need to collect, uh, uh, yeah. make a pure culture of it, and we have had difficulty in getting a pure culture of that. So, is it uh, uh, possible for us to use the basidio cup for maybe? Uh, uh, like you know molecular uh, identification characterization yes 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 ma'am yes we can go with a portion of basidio carp also there is no issue you can extract dna from basidio carp also no issues okay okay and if it is but a dried specimen dried dried specimen uh, that is some sort of limitation but if it is a fresh one that gives a good result we we tried it okay. in number of specimens fresh one is the better option to go with okay okay yeah sure 
Thank you. Because uh, there was also one more thing that we had noticed. Uh, uh, there was a lot yeah. of this uh, mycelium being formed and uh, kind of a lump uh, uh, yeah. which was formed in the uh, petri plate. But we couldn't, when we cut yes. it, there was no uh, structure of any uh, fruiting body or something, but it was like a mark. That, that, yeah. that, that is the usual pattern of polypores, how they how they make out that man. Okay, that confirms that it is <laughs> that Look, we had got probably yeah. If if that kind of uh, growth pattern yeah. is there, it indicates that polypore is on the way. It may take some time. Yeah. Okay. Thank you so much. Thank you. I, it's actually confirming a lot of things while listening to your talk. <laughs> any any time, ma'am. Any time yeah, you sure, can yeah. send me email. No issues. No issues. Yeah. Sure. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Yes, Shambhu Kumar. Uh, if yes, yes, sir. Yes, please go. Uh, Namaskar, Dr. Sir. Namaskar. Namaskar, sir. Namaskar. So, very nice talk, sir, for budding mycologists, okay. particularly in the field of corticoid fungi. Thank you, Dr. Sir, we are working on forestry sector. So mostly we, in case of Ganoderma, sometimes uh, b b tree become dried, but uh, no fruiting body ah. appears. So whether uh, this mycelium first emerging inside the host uh, after uh, five to six years, they will appear uh, and form fruiting body. So how we detect uh, in early stage uh, so that we can uh, manage or we stop the drying of this particular plant? Actually, sir, uh, Ganoderma has a beautiful uh, uh, history of two phases in the life cycle. There is a yes, parasitic yes, yes. phase, there is a saprophytic phase. And Bakshi has described beautifully in that uh, beautiful book published on forest pathology that was that, that is still being the most important uh, book to be followed. As far as uh, the early detection is concerned, the only possible way which we can go with is the, uh, the kind of culture that we can look at. If there is any kind of drying of even a single tree, we have to look for the adjoining trees by culturing their roots. That is the only way because once it happens, it, it infects one plant, then it keeps on growing like that mycorrhizal network. That is the kind of trend which is there. Uh, there are very few uh, instances which I came across. Uh, we have to look for literature if metagenomics uh, is capable of contributing into that. But uh, the only thing which I could get, that was the, 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 the isolation that or the culturing that we have to get from the roots of the adjoining trees. Even there is one phenomenon when you have to manage Ganoderma root rot, trenching is the most common practice which is being followed. Wherever you see uh, those, uh, those fructifications around that trenches, they are being, uh, uh, they are being uh, suggested to manage the Ganoderma root rot. Otherwise, we so, have to look at, and I will I'll definitely look for that. And if I find something uh, uh, worth sharing, I'll share with you, Dr. Shambhu. Sir, could we get uh, with Elijah technique, uh, whether it will be applicable or not? Uh, honestly speaking, I am not sure about that. I have not uh, uh, gone through that. But it is uh, another field that we have to look. I'll definitely see. And if we can uh, suggest and see something like that, I'll definitely share it with you. OK, sir. OK, thank you, sir. Yeah. Thank you, sir. Uh, sir, there's a small question by Shweta on chat box. The encrustations that are uh, present on the hypa how it can be differentiated from the debris if it is present kind of uh, yeah that is a very good question uh, when you have to have actually debris uh, that is usually lost when we tease encrustation is a very stable phenomenon so until unless you have not tapped your slide you will see the presence of encrustation number one number two when you will cut a section vertical section or cross section you will observe the same pattern on the sectional slide also and you will even precisely know what is the pattern of deposition of that encrustation so that is it in the hymenial region subhymenial region or the subiculum region so that confirms that this is 100 percent encrustation I, I think, uh, sir, uh, it was very interesting to know the kind of uh, cystidia has the kind of yeah. uh, thing. It was very surprising. Yes, what? this is this is the group that gives you the maximum diversity in cystidial structures. Yes, yes, it was very amazing to see the photographs. So, in the in fact, the hand drawings. 
that was i'll just have a small request sir, before we end that uh, we have a fungi id group wherein we uh, some of the youngsters they share the photographs for initial okay, identification yeah. so if you have we have the permission then if we can add you in that please. group so that at please, least... please sir please whatever i can contribute it it, it is meant for the world of mycology and yes. it will be a honor to contribute into that thank you thank you thank you so much thank, thank you, you sir. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you. So uh, with, the, uh, with this, we come to the end of today's session. And uh, I think on behalf of MycoAsia, MycoIndia, Dr. Bere Damodar Shana and myself, we thank Dr. Avneet Pal Singh, sir, for, from the bottom of our heart for the uh, kind of enlightenment and the insight he has given to this, uh, this group of fungi. And uh, I, I also wish to thank uh, the entire team of MycoAsia particularly sir for conducting this session so nicely and uh, i am equally indebted to dr shenoy and more in importantly i wish to thank all the respected participants who have spared their so valuable time yeah. and it's been yeah. a very wonderful lively discussion so thank you very much and special thanks to all the worthy students young budding mycologists uh, for their precious